now we're here with Joey. Pleasure, Joey, here. Now, we've got a company, AEA Ribbon Mics. They have their own mics, they have their own preamps, and it's something completely new for me. You might be familiar already, I apologize, but that's why we're here and we hear something. Yeah, great, Joey. Would you tell us a little bit about your preamps and the mics and all this stuff? We're excited. Of course. Yeah, okay, so we'll start with the microphones because it all starts at the microphone. So we make only ribbon microphones, keeping the RCA tradition alive. So the 44, based on the RCA 44, but us using, you know, neodymium magnets, modern technology, all that fun stuff. And then the KU4, which is uh, our version of the RCA KU3A. And after that, you know, we got a whole bunch of different stuff. We got stereo microphones, all different sorts of ribbons that you would use in all sorts of different situations. But that's not really important right now because we got to talk about the preamps that help your beautiful microphones come to life. So, the TRP500 is the best, most musical preamp we've ever made. We got super high gain, uh, super low noise, the best JFETs and op amps that we could find, added a bunch of little tweaks to have the lowest noise possible, and um, it just turns out to be the best preamp we've ever made. And we've made, you know, like five or six preamps over the years, and this is just the best we could do right now with modern technology. So, it's great. Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much. I mean, these these mics are massive. Yeah. Uh, maybe you wanna wanna yeah. Well, you wanna talk a little bit? Oh, you can also definitely uh, do some weight training <laughs> with that. <laughs> you, you tell us a little bit about what mic technology you use and, and uh, are these uh, um, tube mics or yeah? What, what, yeah. 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 So yeah. These are these are ribbon mics specifically. Okay, so it uses a 1.8 micron thick piece of aluminum ribbon uh, between a super high flux magnetic field. Um, so most of them are bi-directional. We do have two directional mics, which you do by blocking the back of it and sending that into a big old acoustical labyrinth down here. Um, so it's just using uh, acoustics to, to tune the microphone. Um, you know, all of them uh, are able to do different things. The majority of our mics, with the exception of the, the KU series, uh, uses a big ribbon and you just block it in different ways and make like change around it, but they're all the big ribbon tuned to the same frequency, corrugated in the same corrugator, made of the same aluminum, and just by changing the outside, you get drastically different sounds. Um, so it's all just magic of acoustics. Um, and that's what makes, you know, AEA so special. We got active, we got passive, we got stuff that you can just beat the crud out of and not worry about, you know, uh, damaging it in any way. Um, so, super versatile. We are really changing, you know, if you think ribbon mics are fragile, you gotta be afraid of them or whatever, you're wrong. Get an AEA mic and uh, you'll prove yourself wrong day after day. That, that is actually a good question. There's a lot of myths about ribbon mics and probably some of the older models yeah. don't have that protection. But for example, what happens if you put this really under phantom, phantom power or, or something like that would happen? I mean, would that yeah. damage the mic or does it have a circuitry in there to protect it already? Or how is yeah. the technology so far in order to prevent, you know, newcomers or people that don't work in studio all day and, and, and you know sometimes forget a switch or just left yeah, over from yeah. somebody else uh, with, with that yeah what, what I mean, could be the I, so we do make active ribbon microphones so with those we have a high gain transformer uh, 1 to 110 into a JFET buffer amp so that allows us to use phantom power on it it requires phantom power but for the passive mics like these two if you have good connectors and everything like that you know a, a well tested XLR cables and whatnot, you're not going to actually, like, you know, accidentally be shorting one of them or hot patching them. If all that is controlled for and you accidentally turn phantom power on or just plug in a, you know, an XLR, not a TRS, but an XLR, uh, it should be fine. Still don't do it, but like, it's, you know, you're putting, um, if you're on a transformer, right, you're putting 48 volts on either side. So you're getting, you're not getting any, any change in voltage, right? So you're, there is some worry about, you know, you could be magnetizing the transformer in some way or another. So don't do it, but it's not gonna blow up your microphone. Uh, it's just gonna, it's, you just shouldn't do it because why, why are you putting high voltage in a place it doesn't need? Yeah, so that's just something you need to be taken care of or you yeah. just be aware of that. But otherwise, yeah. yeah don't and, sleep and the active ones that you have, so that, that require phantom power. So that's definitely yeah. a ribbon mic that has phantom power that needs yeah. phantom power. And you get an extra okay. 12 dB okay. out. So there's no problem at all. So if yeah. you want to get and be absolutely sure, get an active one then. Exactly. Yeah? <laughs> Thanks so much, Joey. Appreciate Great. it. Yeah, have a good NAM. Great NAM. Yeah.